Hey guys, in these next two videos, we're gonna cover the circle of fifths, the Camelot wheel, and how they relate to each other in regards to DJing. This first video is all about the circle of fifths. I'm going to explain how the Camelot wheel relates to the circle of fifths, what the circle of fifths actually is, and the basic theory behind how musical keys work together. I'm explaining all this so you can gain a much deeper understanding about the theory behind the Camelot wheel itself and be able to think more creatively about how you can use the wheel, which will give you an advantage over the average DJ who just uses the wheel without really understanding why it works the way it does. So in the last video, we defined harmonic mixing as mixing tracks that are in the same key or related keys. Harmonic mixing consists of two elements, knowing the key of every song that you play and knowing which keys are compatible. Once you figure out the keys of your songs, either by ear or with software like Mixed in Key, then you can use this cool diagram called the Camelot Wheel to easily figure out which keys are compatible with each other in order to mix harmonically. You can sort of think of the Camelot Wheel like a shortcut to learning how to mix harmonically without having to memorize all the keys and how they relate to each other. Instead, the Camelot Wheel assigns each key a key code number from 1 to 12, like hours around the clock. Okay, so the Camelot wheel is quite literally based on what's known in traditional music theory as the circle of fifths. The circle of fifths is a diagram used for finding the key of a song, transposing songs to different keys, composing new songs, and understanding key signatures, scales, and modes. DJs can use this tool primarily as a map of keys, so that's the portion of music theory that we're gonna focus on in this lesson. Now, if you wanna dig much deeper into music theory and ear training, I highly recommend you check out these four courses on Groove 3 as a complement to this course. Music theory explained, ear training explained, intervals, ear training explained triads, and Pete Huttlinger's wonderful world of chords. So now to understand the keys and the circle of fifths, it really helps to learn a little bit about scales first. A scale is a set of musical notes that are grouped together by frequency or pitch. The circle of fifths, also known as the circle of fourths, represents the relationship between diatonic scales. Diatonic is just a fancy word to describe the major scales or the natural minor scales that consist of seven notes. These seven notes include five whole steps and two half steps in each octave. An easy way to visualize these whole and half steps is to look at a piano. Each key on the piano is a half step from the last. This means that white keys that don't have black keys in between are also considered half steps. So for example, in the C major scale, we have C, D, E, F, G, A, B as the seven notes, and then resolving in the next octave note of C, which is technically eight notes, but there are seven different notes in the scale. So octaves are notes that you hear as being the same in spite of being higher or lower in actual pitch. So play middle C on the piano, then go up the C major scale, the white keys, and the eighth note you play will be another C an octave higher. The oct part of the word, O-C-T, refers to this eight step distance up the scale. Notice the scale is all on white keys. So the five whole steps are C to D, D to E, F to G, G to A, and A to B. So this means that our first half step in this scale is E to F, and the second half step is B resolving back to the next octave C. The root note of the scale acts as the center of the key. In the C major scale, the root note is C. The minor scale is based on a minor key, and the major scale is based on a major key. All songs have key signatures. A key signature is a code in music that tells you how many sharps or flats are in each scale and appears at the beginning of a piece of music. The circle of fifths diagram makes it super easy to see how many sharps or flats are in each key. At the top of the circle of fifths diagram, the key of C has no sharps or flats in its key signature. C, D, E, F, G, A, B. Starting from the key of C and moving clockwise by ascending fifths, the key of G has one sharp. G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp. And then next, the key of D has two sharps. D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, and C sharp. Moving clockwise around the circle of fifths adds sharps to the key signatures, and then moving counterclockwise adds flats to the key signatures. Now the reason why it's called the circle of fifths is that when you move clockwise around the circle, each key is a fifth step up from the last. So for example, the C major scale is C, D, E, F, G, A, B. So you would start at C and count five notes up to G. C, D, E, F, G which means G is a fifth step up from C. The G major scale is G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp. So if you count five notes from G, we get G, A, B, C, D, 
which means D is a fifth step up from G. Now, for those of you who don't know your scales yet, another easy way to get to the fifth is to use the piano keys to count seven half steps. The distance between each individual key represents a half step or semitone from the last. So for example, just count seven half steps from C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, and you get G. If you count seven half steps from G, you'll get D. Now remember, you can also move around this circle counterclockwise, but if you go counterclockwise, each key is a fourth step down from the last, which is why the circle of fifths can also be referred to as the circle of fourths. So for example, the C major scale, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, if you count four keys up from C, then you get F. So just remember, clockwise is fifths, counterclockwise is fourths. Okay. So now that you know how the keys are arranged around the circle, now let's talk about how they all relate to each other. Scales that are a fifth apart are only one note different from each other, which is why the keys work so well together. C to G major is a fifth up. So C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and then C, versus G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, and then G, they share all the same notes except for one difference. F in the C major scale and F sharp in the G major scale, which is why they're likely to transition well when you're mixing songs together in those keys. Now, as a contrast, if you look at C major and F sharp major, the C major scale is C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and then C, versus the F sharp major scale, which is F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, B, C sharp, D sharp, E sharp, otherwise known as F, and then F sharp again. So only two notes are the same in these two scales, E sharp, otherwise known as F and B. So if you're mixing a song in the key of C major with a song that's in the key of F sharp major, they're gonna sound terrible with each other because they only share two notes in their respective keys. So as a DJ who's mixing two or more songs together at the same time, so far you know that the songs that are in the exact same key with each other will mix perfectly together because their respective scales share all the same notes. And you'll also know that you can probably mix two songs whose keys are a fifth step apart from each other fairly easily because they share all the same notes in their respective scales except for one. But wait, up to this point, we've just been dealing with the outside of the circle. These are all major keys. The keys on the inside of the circle are minor keys. Each minor key on the inside of the circle is relative to the major key on the outside of the circle because guess what? Both keys share all the same notes with each other. This means that as a DJ, you can mix and transition back and forth between relative major and minor keys super easy. So for example, we have the C major scale, which is C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and C again. And then the A minor scale, which is A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and A again. Notice that they're the same seven notes, just played in a different order. So the C major scale starts at C and the A minor scale starts at A, but they're all the same notes. This means that C major is the relative major of A minor and A minor is the relative minor of C major. Here's another example. The G major scale is G, A, B, C, D, F sharp, G. And the E minor scale is E, F sharp, G, A, B, C, D, and E. So once again, we have the same seven notes, just played in a different order. So obviously this means that G major is the relative major of E minor, and E minor is the relative minor of G major. Also keep in mind that the inner part of the circle works exactly the same as the outer ring, meaning these two minor keys, A minor and E minor, are a fifth step apart from each other, which means they share all the same notes in their scales except one. We have F in A minor and F sharp in E minor, which is the same difference in their relative major scales, C major and G major. So similarly, if you go two fifths apart, then you have two different notes in each scale and so on. So with that in mind, since you can transition from one key to a fifth step apart fairly easily, theoretically, you could also transition diagonally between major and minor in the same way, since they all share the same notes except one. It really all depends on the notes used in the portion of the songs that you are mixing together at the same time. As long as those sections of the song don't have those two particular notes in the scales that are different from each other playing at the same exact time, you should be good to go. So for example, the C major scale is C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and C. And then the E minor scale is E, F sharp, G, A, B, C, D, and E. 
Notice they share six of the same notes with one difference, F versus F sharp, the same way that the C major and the G major share six of the same notes with one difference, F versus F sharp. This is because E minor is the relative minor of G major. Remember, if the keys are relative, that means all their notes are the same. Okay, wow, that was a lot. But now hopefully you understand the basic mechanics behind the circle of fifths. And as a DJ, you can use its theory to be even more thoughtful about your mixing because you now understand how the keys relate to each other and what goes with what. Now that said, an even easier way to work with the circle of fifths without having to remember the actual keys is to use the Camelot wheel. So if you wanna learn how to use the Camelot wheel, check out the next video.